Welcome back to the Mechanics of Solids lecture series. We're solving examples for bending stress and bending moment of inertia in beams. Our lesson objectives are to be able to compute normal stresses in a beam due to an applied moment. And in order to do this, we'll often need to be able to locate the neutral axis and compute the bending moment of inertia for general cross-section shapes. The first example that we'll look at comes from an illustration from the Mechanics of Materials by Timothy Philpott, Wiley 3rd Edition. It's an upside-down channel section with various dimensions located or indicated in millimeters. We're asked to compute the centroid, the moment of inertia about the z-axis, and the normal stress at the bottom of the flanges due to an applied moment of 1.05 kilonewton meters in the positive direction. Summarize, we're asked to find y bar, which is going to be in millimeters. We're asked to find moment of inertia I sub z, which is going to be in millimeters to the fourth. And we're asked to find sigma x at the bottom, which is going to be a stress, and preferred units are megapascals. Okay? Let's start with the centroid. Notice the centroid is also already given on this section, but we'll go through the calculation process for verification. The formula, general formula for a centroid is if we divide a section up into different areas, and they've already been divided up into three areas here, one, which is this top region, two, and three on the sides, which are identical. The formula for the centroid is y bar equals the sum of the areas times y sub r, which is a distance from a reference axis, divided by the sum of the areas. Okay, so we need to de define a reference axis, and we'll choose the bottom of the section. In order to do these calculations, it's most convenient to make a table. So I'll make a table here for computing the centroid, and in the table, I am going to tabulate the total area of each section in millimeters squared. I'm going to tabulate y sub i in millimeters. And I'm going to tabulate the product of a sub i times y sub i, which will be millimeters cubed. I'm going to do this for section 1, section 2, and section 3. And then in the end, I'm going to want to sum them. Okay, starting with section 1 here, uh, this area on the top has a length of 75 and a, and a thickness of 6. So 75 times 6, this is 450 millimeters squared. The y bar, y sub i, sorry, y sub i is the distance from the reference axis to the centroid of area 1. So I'll draw a little picture here for y1. I call it. It's the distance to, doesn't look like the centroid, but the distance to the centroid of this thickness up here is going to be 40 times half the thickness, which is 3, so y1 is going to be 37 millimeters. Sorry, I'm interfering with it, my formula up there. 37 millimeters for y1. Okay, now let's move on to sections 2, uh, which are the flanges sections 2 and section 3 over here, which, as we said, are identical. First of all, their area, they're both 6 millimeters wide times a height of 40 minus 6, or 34. So the area is 34 times 6, or 204 millimeters squared for each of them. Their, their distance, y sub i, is the distance from the reference axis to the centroid of those sections, about halfway up, since their height is 34, the centroidal distance for y2, y2 is equal to 17. And that's going to be the same for y3. So 17. Okay, now we'll take the product of everything. 450 times 37 is 16,650. 204 times 17 is 3468. 
and I'll replicate it here, 34, 68. Now in the first column, I'm going to sum all the areas, which is 858. In the second column, I'm going to sum, or the third column, I'm going to sum all the a sub i times y sub i, which is 23, 586. Okay, so now I can complete the calculation up here. The sum of a sub i times y sub i, 23,586 millimeters to the fourth, or excuse me, millimeters to the third, divided by the sum of a sub i, 858 millimeters squared. And this gives me a y bar, and if you uh, do the calculation, you can verify that this is true, 27.49 millimeters. Okay, so that is the value that was indicated uh, for the centroid from the reference axis, and the distance from the centroid to the top is 40 minus 27.49, or 12.51. Okay, so that's the first part, the centroidal value, and we'll compute IZ and sigma X in the next video.